Okay, hello, Krita Kelly here from Carla Mental Health Association and as part of our series of interviews for International Women's Day, we're delighted to have Faith Almond with us here this morning. Faith is the Carlo County Age Friendly Ambassador, but Faith also is known to Carlo as our own homegrown stylist. And before stylists became a profession, we had our, our own Faith here in Carlo for the weddings, for the race days. Um, but there's a lot more to Faith Almond than, than that person. We know that public person. So Faith, thanks a million for giving us a few minutes of your time. So can I ask you just to tell us a little bit about Faith Almond before she came to this lady oh, she is thank today? Thank you, for quite a big part of your um, talks. Um, so I suppose I started out um, in work at 17 years of age. I worked in the meat business and uh, I stayed in one position uh, growing up along the ladder along the way. But um, I was 36 years in that position. It was transport and sales manager. It was probably tough. Uh, it was in a man's world, working mainly on a daily basis with 90% men. I never had any problems. I always found um, people very, very nice. You will have tough. I mean, any job is tough and you will have your challenges. But, you know, I think if you work along with people, I always found if you work with them, not work against them, you're, you're winning. And uh, so I was 36 years there. Um, transport uh, involved a huge amount of dedication. It was fresh product, we were dealing with beef, uh, lamb, and uh, all over Europe the containers were going, and often got a phone call regular, three o'clock in the morning, container is maybe held in customs, container is turned over on the road, um, you just get up and go and do what you won't say, I'll wait till tomorrow morning or I'll go back to sleep and do it in a half an hour. It's just, it was, it was the nature of the job. And maybe I look back now and think, gosh, how did I do that? But you know, I enjoyed every minute of it. And I suppose it toughened me up. And 36 years, uh, the year I got cancer, 20 years ago, uh, 2004, um, breast cancer, very aggressive. And I was the year on chemotherapy and radiotherapy. But look, thank God I'm here to tell the tale. So again, that was a challenge. But I found, I suppose, I had been toughened up from my work and uh, everything else kind of, from once I came out the other side, and just got on it. But look, it wasn't, it, it's not easy. There's no point saying, gosh, this is an easy journey. But I suppose I am strong and uh, I probably can deal with things because I was used to dealing with different uh, situations. And, you know, all I would say is thank God to be so well. But I do think after coming out of an illness, um, it does certainly make you stronger and you really appreciate, um, you, you hear the birds singing, you see the flowers, you see the daffodils. And, you know, before that you were so busy, you didn't even notice. You could walk over a flower and you wouldn't see it. But now the small little things that I would never have noticed, I notice them and I appreciate them. And I suppose that's something that we now call mindfulness. Uh, you know, and it's something that we all promote as, as part of our well-being. But isn't it the simple things? It's the simple things. And I think, I, I do have to agree, when I think about it, it is a very hard time for people, um, you know, when it should be getting easier. I would listen to my grandmother years ago, and she talked about washing the clothes on the washing board and the car on it. So we kind of think, gosh, that's not for real. Yeah. But you know what? It's terrible to say. There were simpler, easier times, I think. There's a lot of pressure on people now. And what I find reality is really gone. You know, younger people, a lot of them don't have any concept of what all of life and what life throws at you. Um, so I think, I feel sorry for young people because they are living in very stressful times and a lot of challenging, a lot of pressure. And, but there are, you know, like yourselves, there are great uh, backup for people. And, you know, what I would say is nobody knows from yourself how you're feeling. People say to me some days, God, you look wonderful. And I thought, if you saw me this morning at 8 o'clock, you probably think I had one leg in the grave. That, you know, so it's not how you look. You can make yourself look wonderful. It's how you feel, you know. And then to go and seek the support, because the support is out there. Yeah. Yeah. And you talked there about working in a very male-dominated world in your former working life, Faith. What were they, what were the, and again, you did allude to some of them, treating people with respect, so it didn't matter that it was a male-dominated world. But were there other things that you found helped you through that time? I don't know really. Yourself. Yeah, I suppose I'm lucky that um, 
I'm probably a strong person. And everybody can't be like that. There are people different. I mean, if I had to go get an injection, it's just another injection. When they were doing the chemo, I said, just give me it. I'll drink it. Just get it over with. You know, whereas I have a few days beside me, they'd be kind of, you know, and I would feel so sorry for them. Because people are different. If people, some people just see a needle, yeah. they're just, you know. Yeah, actually, it reminds me of, um, actually, he was a farmer, a guy who went to his factory, and he said to his daughter one morning, I was on the radio, because they'd ring me every now and again to see how I was getting through the chemo, and uh, he said to his daughter, will you, will you come here and listen to her? She's on the radio. You think she was after getting it torn out of her finger? And I always remember that 20 years later, but it wasn't that I was great, it wasn't that I was brave, it wasn't that I was anything, it was just, it's the way you get on in it. You know, I never really think about yesterday, I never look back and say, gosh, if I had done this, because it can't be changed. Exactly. And I mean, if, I, if I had picked the right numbers on Saturday night, I would have won the lot all. But it mightn't solve everything either. So I probably have the mentality, and I'm blessed that I have, that I don't look back. I just try and look forward and uh, that's and look at the positives as you Absolutely. say. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, it certainly has stood you in good, in good standards. Yeah, but it's, yeah. I suppose, look, it's great to be able to be like that. Yeah. So I never undervalue somebody that hasn't that attitude. Do you know? Yeah. And I suppose that's the, that's the problem. Mm -hmm. Not everybody has that. Is there Absolutely. Has that Absolutely. Yeah. It's certainly a great help for me, but I certainly know that probably eight hundred people we worry about things. Yes. But yeah. I just don't worry about things that I can't, that I have no control over. Yeah. yeah. And that's sort of the mantra that when we, we talk about, you know, promoting positive mental health, control what you can control and yeah. know what you can't, you know, because there's exactly. no point in putting your yeah. energy into something that you have no control over. Exactly. And you know, it eats into you. Yeah. So there's no, you just have to try and block out things because they do it. And, you know, I just say, look upwards and onwards and move on yeah. if you can. Mm -hmm. And in your your world now, is this your dream? Doing what you're doing now, you're ambassador for age friendly. Do you find that challenging as, as you move into that stage? I don't life? really, but trust. Suppose you're honest. Everything is a bit more challenging as you get older. I was seventy one last week, and do you know what? You'd even notice in that year. Every year as you get older, it, it does present new challenges. Uh, but it's. I always think you just have to try to push yourself. Yesterday morning I got up and I said, I know now I have to wash my hair. Jeez, you make the coffee, you put it off and you go back. And I said, now, I might as well have the shower and do my hair now. You know, this morning was the same thing. I woke up and I thought, oh, wouldn't it be easier now not to have to bother getting dressed and getting ready and whatever. But that's the problem. If I had nothing to do, I would be that same old, you could be in your tracksuit all day or in whatever. And then I get ready and I come in here and meet you lovely people. And it's wonderful. And a yeah. sense of achievement, a sense of process. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And, you know, if I'm able to help somebody, that's great. I just love when I maybe do something for someone for a wedding or for the races. And they're so happy. And I think that's that's lovely. I love seeing people, yeah. you know. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. So you, a positive mental attitude really is. It's what you're telling us. It's what has It is. And as I said, it's not every day. Last year was a very challenging year for us. I lost my sister, Frances. Uh, she was never sick, she was younger than me, my little sister, and for six months I watched her in hospital. Her best friend passed away three weeks ago, and his brother passed away. So that has been a very challenging year. Uh, but what can you do? You still have to just get up and go and do the best you can. But I fully understand, and probably when you get to my age, you understand a lot of things that younger people don't understand, you know. And with the... Um, going to the hospital and trying to do my best for Frances. It wasn't to be with her. It didn't matter whether she was positive or not positive. It just wasn't going to be. And unfortunately, she passed away. So I, I, I know exactly. Now, for people saying, if they don't know these things and you feel sorry for somebody, but when you've been through something, you fully understand. And I now understand how other people feel. Yes. Because you have to be through something, you know. And just, uh, you know, people come to you for, be it the hat or the outfit for the wedding or the races. But to meet somebody like yourself with the attitude you have and the life experience you have, Faith, you're giving them much more than a style or a, a, a look for the day. You're giving them your life experience and that's your own personality. Thank you. So it's, it's been a pleasure to talk to you and you, 
little nuggets there in a, in a very informal conversation yeah. about how to look after your mental health and what has got you through. Yeah, because I feel if you don't do it for yourself, there's nobody going to do it. If I didn't get this morning, put on the makeup, wash the hair, get myself ready and feel I look somewhat good, I wouldn't be able to come in here and speak yes. yeah. because you wouldn't have the confidence. And every woman can have that. Um, it's just really you have to do it for yourself and push yourself. Well, you're a testament to to being a strong woman in society yeah. today. And so I'm going to give you more. Yeah. Um, I'll just uh, read it here now. So I am a woman. With unwavering grace, she stands, life's challenges in her hands. A strong woman in strife unswayed, in her spirit, fears allayed. Resilience in her every vein, through storms and sun, through loss and gain. A strong woman, a force so true, in her presence, life anew. Thank you. That sums it up. Faith, thanks a million. A lovely conversation to have to celebrate International Women's Day. Thank you. Thanks a million.